How many of you are men? Okay, welcome men. How many of you are women? Oh, if you raise your hand, this sermon is for you. I think that should take care of everyone. And what I wanna talk about today is the legacy that you and I could leave by the grace of God through our families for the service of Jesus for generations to come. And so I thought it would be fun to start with a story. And this is a very common story in the history of Mars Hill Church. This woman, lovely woman says, when I came to Mars Hill Church, I was not a Christian. If you're not a Christian, welcome to Mars Hill Church. You will be soon. Uh, My father and grandfather, she says, had repeatedly physically, sexually, and emotionally abused me. This is why we do redemption groups. This is the story of one in three women statistically. I came to Morris Hill as a non-Christian and Jesus is the first man I ever trusted. I'll tell you what, if you're gonna start with one guy, that's the front of the line right there. Trust Jesus first. Then I realized I wanted to be married and to be a mother, but I didn't trust men because of what had been done to me. I ended up meeting a guy who became a Christian at Mars Hill. You guys who don't know Jesus, welcome to Mars Hill. You're here to get saved and and knock it off. Okay, that's why you're here. Um, Whatever it is you're doing, Jesus wants you to knock it off and he's gonna help. Ended up meeting a guy who became a Christian at Mars Hill and his desires were for Jesus and marriage and kids and he seemed like a good guy. We got married. We got a premarital process for that to help you out. He's never raised his hand. He's never raised his voice to the kids or me. He's very sweet. See, we believe men should be tough and tender. Somebody breaks into your home, tough. Your wife wants to go on a date, tender, right? Somebody wants to take your daughter out, tough. (laughs) You're gonna take your daughter out, tender. See, tough and tender. He's very sweet. We have two daughters. Every night he snuggles with them. That's good for daddies too. It changes us. He prays over them. He reads the Bible with them. He kisses them on the forehead. He tells them that he loves them. He sings worship songs to Jesus with them. They think their daddy is the greatest man in the world. Praise God. Almost every night, she says, I cry because I realize that my family is changing and my daughters won't have to deal with what I dealt with because they have a different daddy. Amen? Friends, honestly, that's what we want to see happen thousands and thousands and thousands of times. We want men to meet Jesus, women to meet Jesus, to be forgiven of sin they've committed, to be healed from sin that's been committed against them, to fall in love. Some of you are single, some of you are married. 93% of you statistically will marry at some point. To have a marriage that is endearing and enduring, your friends and lovers and worshipers of God. You make some babies who grow up to love and serve the same God as you so that the work of Jesus continues long after you're gone by people with your last name. That's what we want.